Good to be back. Um, wow, that seems loud. And of course, I have to do the uh, obligatory smile. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that went good. I like the old days when you had to, the crank Kodak ones, and then you didn't know if you had the right picture or not for uh, months. Anyway, uh, today um, you were talking about a tracing guy or whatever at a uh, you know file system uh, uh, summit. So why am I here? I'm here to talk about dynamically allocated pseudo file systems. So I decided to start off with a problem statement, basically saying pseudo file systems are created with the entry and I nodes that are seldom accessed. There are thousands of them that are just idle, sitting there idle, wasting memory. It would be much better and more memory efficient if we just allocate them when we need them, just in time. So I just did on uh, one of my uh, uh, machines, um, it just said, okay, I'm just curious, how many sys file systems are there, or fi how many files? First I said, how many files are there in slash sys? And that's 45,000. How many directories? 5,922. How many are in the proc file system? Now, of course, proc file system expands how many tasks you have, and this is just a normal machine. This is like my server I'm running. So basic server running. Um, you know, I had uh, 227,000, actually closer to 228,000 uh, uh, fi uh, files with 203,000 directories, or no, sorry, 20,000 directories. And then I'm like, okay, what about my system? I'm using the dash mount, so it's only the file system that these things are looking at. And tracing has uh, typically um, 15,000 uh, files, uh, 2,600 um, directories. The debug is actually actually quite small on this machine. Uh, well, it's my server, so I don't have that much debugging turned on. So it uh, was 100 and, or, you know, 1,695 files, 398 um, directories. Total of 320,191 total files and directories together. Why do I care? Well, actually, Alexei has to do with this, I and mean, he's not here, but um, he actually, um, he was doing something. I said, why don't you just use instances of the TraceFS file systems, because he was using traceprintf, traceprintk, or whatever, and, and I didn't like the way he was using it, and I asked him to do it another way, and he came back, and he said, we analyzed it, and uh, whenever we create an instance, it creates a lot of memory, uh, and we can't afford to do that. Your instances are very, very high level. I mean. It's the ring buffer is 1.4 megabytes per CPU, and this increase in files, I was like, okay, let me just take a look at this. And I said, how many um, files are there in my directory? And then if you create instances, by doing so, you do make dir instances foo, and it makes like a duplicate of the top level. So you can enable events. So all the event directories within an instance are all duplicated, so you could enable them or set filters or triggers or whatever you want on events on an instance that will not affect the top level or other instances. So every time you create an instance, it will create a whole duplicate of the event FS file system. Yes? Oh, I mean, um, uh, well, I have my other laptop. I actually could do a demo, uh, but I can't do it on this one because it's my work laptop. But basically what an instance is, is basically a way of creating another ring buffer within the Linux uh, kernel. So basically if you wanted a separate ring buffer to do something different, for example, I'll be doing sked switch tracing. Um, I think um, Raz Daemon or Daemon, whatever it is, Raz Daemon creates a separate instance uh, to do recording that doesn't get affected by other instances. We do this in Chrome OS. We'll create an instance uh, to do some debugging, even TraceFS, like whenever we want to do some specific tracing that doesn't affect anything else, so we only get our own trace events. We create an instance, enable events, record. So it's a separate ring buffer. That's basically what it is. So it's a way you do multiple ring buffers, but it gets expensive. I mean, I did, on my kernel, I just said, okay, the kernel I was using, uh, the average size of a D-entry is 192 bytes. The average size of an inode is 624 bytes. And if you add all those up with all the inodes and everything, I mean, that's basically you get a D-entry and inode for every single file you have. That's 14 megabytes of just the entries, 14 megabytes for when you create an instance. Uh, that's a lot of memory for that I don't think is needed to be used. So then I'm like, you know, I'm curious, what about all these other file systems that we have out there? So I looked at the, you know, SysFS uh, file system. That's 42 megabytes of the entries and stuff that's going on. Um, and for the proc system, yes, I had a lot of files and like that. That's 202 megabytes of memory. So yeah. the, with 
To be fair to the PROC file system, it doesn't actually keep dentures and inodes around. Does it? It has a, uh, its own little structure that it expands, well, it creates a dentry and uh, inode just in time when you want them, and then it gets rid of them again. Okay, so how the, is the it? PROC data entry structure. So it basically, as soon as you let go of the dentry, it's the, the deputs help us just is there okay how do we do that implement that because that okay this would be that my yeah. talk could end right now if i could use yeah. that for trace fs probably well the, the the problem with trace fs i think is all the attribute tables we've got all over the place right so it, it's not uh, trace fs uh debug fs particularly yes. and the sys the config so, fs we've got these all these attribute Ted tables wants to talk. <laughs> yeah. I see I'm getting yeah. antsy. So, so PROC does this, it's done as a PROC specific hack as opposed to something that other file systems could use. Um, so I think if your question is, um, why isn't there a generic version of this? The answer is it was done once for PROC and no one ever thought to generalize it. Yeah, I see Chris I back there I think it too. could <laughs> still be generalized. I just, you've got, a, you basically you've got a tree. Yep. And you can just have more than one tree. This one's for proc FS, this one's for that, this one's for that. Chris? So when you when you put up the, the slide before this one, so I, it, hop, I hopped onto a production machine and I, I did a find on slash proc to see how big it was. It took until Ted started talking for it to finish. Yeah. Um, so it was around 31 million files in slash proc. Yeah, so there, obviously there's a hack in proc files yeah. for this. So in other words, but, I want that hack. Right, but <laughs> it, it was pegged at 100% the entire time we've been talking. Um, so it might not be the right hack. So what we did in production is we switched from anything that looked at slash proc to using BPF iterators in everything that was doing the equivalent of ATOP or whatever else. And there's something I also wanted to talk about that I actually don't have my slides, but um, actually, uh, Christian, or uh, speak. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, the, the tracing FS is a separate file system, right? Yes. I mean, you could probably implement a proc hack in there. The thing is, do we want to implement a hack? Yes, yes. The, the point that I don't want to do, I don't want to hack. I actually want a proper solution here that not just TraceFS could do, but DebugFS or whatever FS that we have in there. I don't know what other pseudo file systems that we have. We should have a generic way to do the, any pseudo file system should be just in time. There's no need for this. I mean, just to go back on my here, I uh, just want to go, let me jump ahead real quick. Um, I talk about pseudo inodes for, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, AJ presented this at Plumbers. And he had event FS, and it was very, um, he, AJ's not here, he's a VMware person. And uh, when I left, I said, please continue, because he was like, should I stop it? Because it was kind of doing a project for me. And I said, please, if you could continue. And he just sent me the patches on Sunday. And then that's why I've been hacking. I added him up on my um, uh, uh, virtual machine, and I did it. I was doing testing with and without the event FS. This is just the event file systems. This isn't even the other debug FS stuff or I mean TraceFS files. There's a bunch of TraceFS files outside of EventFS, but EventFS is the biggest one, so I just use that. And you know, it allocates things, it allocates everything dynamically. It does have a hack, but just for EventFS, not for the rest of the things. I'm gonna explain one of the reasons. I mentioned that uh, at Plumbers, I brought this up. Ted was actually one of the people that said, hey, we should do a generic thing for everyone. Uh, and that's why I'm here today. Again, what's the best way to do this? Uh, I, we need a good internal API, <laughs> not another freaking hack. And I'm trying to stay with the, you know, the code of conduct and, and how I express this. So, I mean, right now I could just use the current uh, event FS stuff that's being, he hasn't sent the patches out to the main line yet. He wanted me to review them before he did that. So, like I said, I just got them on Sunday. Um, so I did this little idea. I, I just did a cat of proc, proc slab, slab info and proc mem info. And then I created a, did a make DIR, the instances foo. And then I did, okay, let's look at this. And then I did the diff of before and after to see what, what it looked like. So without EventFS, um, this is the uh, mem info. And you'll see the, okay, I just did my taxes. So anything in parentheses means negative number. <laughs> so um, so the free available, that's, I mean, this is on kilobytes. So that's 14 megs right there that's uh, not there. It shows it right here. You can see the stuff now at the bottom, you know, the slabs, 11 megs, 10 megs. Uh, before and after by just doing that make DIR. It's kind of big. Um, for the um, 
eventfs, when I added the code, if you look here, much smaller numbers, huge, huge difference. I mean, we got like a megabyte extra in slab. And there is stuff that, you know, all the internal state has to still be there. We can't get rid of that. But that's only a one meg. It's a very small, you know, instead of, you know, 11 meg, it's one meg. So a factor of 10 decrease, well, almost a factor of 10. Um, so the mem info, you know, before is like, again, 10 megs, and everything like that. And then the before, after, if I compare, compare the two with the slab, whoops, oh yeah, the first, I ignore the last thing, I was supposed to delete that slide. Um, the so differences are like, you see like 12 kilobyte or 12 megabytes differences between the two for the slab info, yeah. So how many objects are we dividing this number by? Is it like one object this big? That's or the is thing, it a okay. million objects this big? Okay, so there's, we could split up the event FS because there's one event that we care about for the structure. But if you create, we still need to um, allocate for state because every event has its own state per instance. And that can't be just done just in time. Actually, we could kind of do it just in time. So there is ways of saying, okay, allocate this if they're going to enable this. So when something gets enabled, we gotta create a state for that. So we, have to, we could do it just in time. But I think right now we're just focusing on the D entries and the I nodes, get rid of them. So we actually could even improve this better by making the actual state objects allocated when you go enable the event. Um, which comes back to um, what I wanted to also discuss was there's some things that maybe we don't want to free up and have an API to not free it up. So for example, when you enable event, I don't think I want the, um, the event to be allocated when, or that, that the entry for disabling the event to be just in time allocated. Because like you said, everything's allocated when you look at it. When you're not looking at it, it gets freed up. And my fear is if something happens like memory contention and you want to disable events or stop the event, and then you go to stop the event, and then you run into a memory problem, you can't allocate the event, you can't stop the event. So I figured there would be some, we need an API also to be able to say, freeze, keep this in memory, don't free it up until we say it's okay to do so. A pool, what, a pool? Yeah. But, there, but like you said, emergency pool, or yeah, either have an emergency pool that you can just pull from to get, make sure that it's available, that we don't, if you want to stop events, you could just say, okay, stop this event and uh, it will work. So that would work too, having an emergency pool. That's a good idea. Anyone taking notes? Oh. <laughs> Stupid question. What API is the uh, is TraceFS built on? Like, is it built on the SysFS APIs or on? It has its own API. The, um, it, there's actually a TraceFS create file, TraceFS create. Okay, so it's completely a, a completely separate thing. Okay. Yes. It's, it, I kind of copied DebugFS and then just stripped it, because that's what Greg told me to do. He, he said, uh, the whole reason why I TraceFS is because a lot of people are telling me, we want tracing on our production system, but we don't want DebugFS on our but, uh, system, so can you please separate the two? So we created TraceFS so that people could not compile in DebugFS and still have TraceFS. Yeah, I was just wondering because otherwise it sounded like if you use the SysFS APIs or KernFS APIs, then one of those would probably have to learn that feature. Yeah. But if it's separate, then you could probably have an external API. That The thing that I was scared about or that I was thinking about is plumbing this into writing this into something that is usable both by proc and tracefs sounds interesting uh, so because proc is so special right so if we were to do something in tracefs have that be the guinea pig or whatever and start building up some sort of generic way of doing this and then slowly maybe move sysfs to it and maybe procfs Procfest sounds very, very special, I don't know. But I, I guess I Chris's complaint was the fact that because it's everything's just in time and since you have thousands of stuff and you do, you know, you're reading the Procfest, it's going to slow everything down. Well, if you want to test it thoroughly, putting it in Procfest would be one good way to do that. <laughs> or you'd know really quickly if it started going wrong. Yes. So. That's basically all I, I basically came here to basically come and say, I want to move this forward. Because uh, we brought this up plumbers and said, hey, because we, first we were just wanting to make sure we were doing EventFS was correct. And I think the feedback that we got from the uh, VFS folks was, this should be more generic. It shouldn't just be for you, because it sounds like it'd be useful elsewhere. And that's why I'm here is kind of say, how can I go about making this useful, not just for TraceFS and ending there. In fact, we created the EventFS as kind of a separate file system within the TraceFS file system because right now it's just focused on events because I didn't want, uh, the events has a set, separate structure, but I think we want to actually bring that up and do it for all of TraceFS. And 
I guess the reason why we didn't do that is we had control files in there that we were afraid of just allocating on the fly. So. Well, at least I will let people know and what's going on. So if you see patches from me, don't crucify me too badly. <laughs> hey, any comments? Did you ask uh, Greg's opinion on this? Because I think, um, yeah, DebugFS has this uh, node, right? concept and well, this you, you need to generalize the concept of an internal node and then the lookup creates the onion and then tree from the node tree and that's the general. So you're, wait, are you saying to ask Greg to see if it, to do it for DebugFS do or? Yeah, just to, for advice, yeah. just consult yeah. about the, yeah, generalize. Because so TraceFS is outside of DebugFS now, so it's not, yeah, they're not related. DebugFS could benefit from that yeah. as well. Of course, there, if you notice, at least in my, was the, I didn't have many debug things on, but there's not much, not many files and directories actually in DebugFS, which actually surprised me. This might be me misremembering things, but for example, deep, DebugFS uh, has this system, or SysFS in general, I think, has this system where you, when you create a new entry in SysFS or, or a directory, then you essentially pin it and you pin the whole file system with it and in for it in order to go away you need to call i don't know sisyphus remove or, or whatever mm -hmm. it is so right. the infrastructure is based on the assumption you the caller are responsible for uh, for cleaning this up so this is deeply enshrined into sisyphus so it might be a lot of work to actually pump this in there well yeah okay because the idea that i have isn't just to clean it well if that's just for the is it just for the uh, the entries and uh, inodes to do all that cleaning up, or that's what's pinning? Because SysFS might be also questionable it's, because... It's a, it's, a, it's a bit weird. Um, but then we have a couple of file systems like this. Security of S, for example, is it works the same way. The dentry pins the whole file system, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's really weird. Oh. Yeah, that's the underlying thing, yeah. Oh, and there's one more thing I forgot to mention, too. Race conditions. Um, the event FS, I, I, when I was reviewing some of the code, I think there's gonna be a lot of issues with circular locks, grabbing locks and certain, you know, the parent locks and stuff like that, because you have to be able to, when something's not used, you gotta free it, and do you, when do you free it, how do you free it? Well, I mean, obviously if, you're, if you have a parent or child node, uh, but I noticed there's a lot of fun stuff there. That's why having yeah. a generic. The, this is all, be, I think this has all been pretty well sorted in ProcFS, because processes appear all the time and disappear. So they have to yeah. add things and take them away, add them to be taken away while you're using them. But so I'm, a, I'm assuming that pocket test, it's just, okay, when the, when the test disappears, you just destroy everything from the top down. This is going to be anywhere in the tree that this could happen at. Well, yeah, so a, a pro, the task can disappear and all the subtree under the, the tasks directory, which is a vet, list of signals and well, actually, FDs and stuff, it all goes away. Right, Even right, if you've got files right. open, then well, it stops you accessing them from that point. But the, I'm actually talking about, let me step back there, because that's when the actual, pro, I brought that up as when the process itself disappears. This is when the process is there, and you have the tree, and then you have to free up these inodes and everything while the process and everything is still there. So it, they're only created when someone does an LS. Well, yeah, the, the, <coughs> the, uh, the deput, uh, Super block operation or I know yeah. operation takes care of that. You just return the appropriate number and it, as soon as the files deeper, it just deletes the entry and the inode. They just go away. Okay, and yeah. so it is ProcFS and SFS. So, that, are, so ProcFS has its own structure which describes just the things it needs mm -hmm. and it, it creates them on demand, uh, uh, dentures and inodes on demand. Okay. And then it deals with the thing it's pointing to going away while the file is open. So if yeah. anyone here doesn't mind, I'm probably, like, I'm taking notes on who is mentioning, talking here, and I'm gonna probably send you notes like, hey, where does ProcFS do this? <laughs> because that's a lot of, it. I'm looking yeah. at the VFS but, uh, but, directory, I'm like, I have no idea what's doing what. But if you look at the, the problems with SysFS, it's so intertwined with all the device model and yes. all the drivers, and you've got all these static, what appear to be static variables that Create, create files behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and it's going to be interesting changing all that lot. It might be best to make it create effectively a prop, de uh, a prop de entry rather than a uh, de entry in an inode. That may make things simpler, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll have to take a look at the code and see what they do and see if there's any way to save that. Yeah, just, I don't know if the uh, ProcFS has a revalidate 
to do that. It uses the de-revalidate callback, probably. De-revalidate is what does that. I suppose, de-revalidate, and, and lookup creates the de-entry from the internal state. That's the two main things to look at. Now, another question is, I guess, I'll probably ask you guys just for advice. I had these, this guy from you know, AJ send me all these patches. Should I go, go work, do the event FS, or should I just say screw it and let's go back and start with making the whole trace FS dynamic? Even though he has something that kind of works, but it could be like a wait test case for, okay, where the, where the bugs are gonna be. I don't know the VFS system at all. And I, basically, it's kind of like how I got my uh, mail server working. I got it working and don't touch it, and if it breaks, I spend lots of hours trying to figure out how to fix it again. Uh, that's the way I feel like I'm working with VFS. I mean, do, do, do you have other users that would really like to use this feature? Um, I don't know. Well, I think that's a talk to Greg, talk to some other yeah. file system that might have a similar use case, and then based on that, you can make the decision whether what, or not. What other pseudo file systems are there? I mean, what we have... C group FS, but C group FS doesn't need to create anything on demand. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a, there's also a library. There's, yeah, current FS is a generalization. It has, yeah. it has the concept of inode, uh, of node. It has the concept of internal node. So right. that, you should look at their area. I, I'm not sure which pseudo file system uses CronFS okay. besides CSFS. Yeah, and then there's a library. There's a library that implements simple file operations mm -hmm. for pseudo FS. Uh, but generally, the concept of VFS is that lookup operation instantiates the de-entry and inode from, of course, some yeah. backing storage, so that right. would be your internal state. Th that's kind of like what we looked at. And validate is used on lookup to make sure that the backing store didn't go away yeah. from a network server or something like that. Because I, I figure this is the way probably like, you know, this happens with file systems, normal file systems, where you create it and when, yeah, and then there's reclaim. You, when you reclaim hits, you kind of free these things, right? And then, yeah. Yeah. Another reason I would look at ProcFS rather than SysFS as a base, is that SysFS has to do lots of mercadeurs and stuff when it's setting up. Mm -hmm. ProcFS gets around that by just creating the inode that's already created. It doesn't need to do the mercadeur because it's using its right. own tree at the back. So you stand on the thing, it creates the inode on the spot. I, I'd probably go to ProcFS anyway because I'm more familiar with that code. I've actually done hacks in that code a little yeah. bit. So And SysFS still, because of the K object, I still, I have no idea how K objects work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody does. <laughs> it's great listening. <laughs> yeah, you should be aware that there's some uh, operation, I think, D drop, right? That, that decides whether or not the D entry stays behind mm -hmm. in cache after you drop the reference. But for, I think it's for all pseudo file system, it doesn't happen, I think, uh, unless you explicitly keep the reference. I don't know, that's some, there's some quirk with Procrit API there, but uh, that's not an issue, just something to be aware of. And I guess I've just assumed that no one here has an issue with me moving forward and just trying to fix this and, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll show it to Greg. So, I mean, it's about time up. So, that's, that was my presentation, um, just to get my feedback from you. Well, thank you.